Okay, it says that we're live, so just going to go ahead and get it started. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechak, Radash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the elect. Okay, this is going to be uh, a lesson, uh, well, a series that we're going to be going into the book of Amos, and we're going to start today with this lesson. We're going to start with uh, Amos chapter one. So, uh, you know, Amos was a, a prophet, of course, of, of Israel, uh, excuse me, a prophet to Israel, but actually he uh, he dwelt in the land of, uh, of Judah before he was called. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of prophecies in, in the book of Amos that per pertain to today. We're not going to get to all of the prophecies uh, in the book. We're just going to start with the first chapter. But there's a uh, there's a lot of uh, nations that are addressed. So Lord willing, it's edifying when we go into the various different locations of these uh, nations that are addressed and what happened. The history that happened back then goes to show you the same uh, uh, mentality of these nations, these other nations today, not just Esau, but these other nations as well. OK, so uh, did you have any any opening statements? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same thing. It's, it's the same thing when you go back through the history, no matter which prophet you reading about. You know, you had the the so-called powers that be that had us in captivity. Then you had the prophet that was we prophets among, uh, uh, unto the nations. You see, we, even though we Israelites, we got to preach to the whole world. You see, I'm talking about the Orkimini world, including everybody world. Okay. You see, so the other nations know their judgment. Israel know the judgment because the Lord is going to judge everybody. Right. You see, and when you look at Amos, the way you uh, when, when you when we start to read Amos. You're going to be able to see how it is today because you got the same things going on, man. You got the same things going on. When you're looking at the prophecies, when you're looking at the nations that's involved, the, the key players and how these things are going. Because now when Israel find out that they Israelites, it's all a party. It's, it's nothing but a party from that point on. You see? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're the Israelites. Oh, we're the Lord's chosen people. Uh oh, that's what's up. The heathen going into slavery, whoop de whoop, blah de blah, heathen, heathen, heathen. But then as you keep on reading it, Amos, you see that he getting on Israel too. What you mean we wicked too? Yes, you are. And this is why. You see, the same spirit is in the earth today. The prophets are prophesying to the nations as well as Israel that the Lord is going to judge you, man. Con, that's right. Go Con, yeah, I'm just setting up some uh, precepts here. Oh, Kashad, bear with me. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to get to all of that. You know, uh, when it comes to um, when it comes to Israel, Israel isn't isn't really a, uh, addressed as much as these other nations. But it, when it when it when it comes around to Israel getting addressed in the third chapter, uh, which we're not going to get to today. But uh, when it comes around to Israel getting addressed, it continues on for like pretty much the rest of the book. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we're, it's going to get heavier as we go, as we go along with this series, but we're going to start with Amos chapter one. And, uh, I got my screen share here. So let me just go ahead and transfer this over. I'm going to go back to the top. <clears throat> All right. Um, make sure this can be seen here. Add this to the stream. Okay. Can y'all see, can you see my screen here as a coin? Done. Okay, cool. All right. So we're going to start with Amos chapter one. Verse one, it says the words of Amos, who was among the herdmen of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of of uh, Uzziah, king of Judah. OK, so there's a there's a lot to unpack here in this in this first verse. Uh, so first of all, let's get let's actually get what Amos means and how to say it in the Hebrew. This is important because all of the Hebrew names actually mean something. Uh, this is the word here for Amos. Strong's H5986, I'm a was, uh, which means burden or burdensome. Um, and uh, the root word is imas, which is a verb, which means uh, to, to carry a load, to load, to be laden with something, to impose a burden upon something. Okay. So I'm a was is like the noun version or the adjective version of that verb there, uh, which means a, a burden or, or burdensome. Okay. Which is a spirit because he put a he put a spiritual uh, a burden, you know, on on all of these uh, with all these prophecies that the Lord was speaking through him. You know, you put a burden on the on the ears 
uh, and in the hearts of the of the individuals or of the nations that he was addressing. Okay. Uh, now it says who was among the herdmen of Tekoa. So a herdman, literally like a sheep, a uh, sheep keeper or a shepherd. He was a regular, you know, uh, uh, shepherd, you know, he, he was, he was, he was a regular, a so-called a regular guy, right. When the Lord called him into the ministry. Um, not, not, a, not a coincidence that he was a shepherd. You, know, right. so you, keep, you, you keep on seeing these shepherds pop up in the uh, scriptures and they, mm -hmm. they, 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 take on these roles of watching over the flock, bringing our people to repentance, you know, letting, letting, letting them know, letting them know the Lord's instructions. Kind of. Every time, every time. If you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my lambs. Oh, Amos did that too in his daily life and spiritually. You see? Right. So when you, when you look at the daily lives of our forefathers and you look at their spiritual lives, it, you can put yourself in those shoes. It's okay. Go ahead. Khan, that's right. And um, it says, who was among the herdmen of Tekoa? Now, um, uh, Amos speaks a little bit more to this. I'm going to jump to Amos chapter 7. Um, I know eventually we're going to run into it again, but I'm going to just get this real quick. In Amos, the seventh chapter, uh, he talks about how he was pretty much just a regular occupation individual before the Lord <clears throat> called him into that. Uh, into this ministry. And so it Just says, like yeah, exactly. Exactly. Amos chapter seven, verse 14, it says, then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was an herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And by the way, there was an actual uh, school of the prophets during this time, you know, what was known as the school of the prophets, uh, like, like, for example, uh, Elijah and Elisha, um, you know, they were belong, they, they, they were, you know, they had that school of prophet, uh, school of prophets. Even if you go into, um, I believe it's, uh, uh, second Kings, the first chapter where, uh, it talks about, uh, Elijah being caught up. Okay. Or around the first, the beginning of second Kings. Um, it, you, if you read about it, or if you read into it, into that chapter before he gets caught up, he has a bunch of, um, he's going from city to city, you know, and, and there's like a bunch of other prophets, or, or students that um, were following him and, you know, talking to, uh, to Alicia, if you read that, um, that account. And so, but, but uh, this um, specifically hey, notes. You, pull, pull, pull up the word college. Okay. Uh, like just the dic the dictionary meaning of it? Like it, like El Centro in the scriptures. Okay. Pull up college. Oh, oh, just search it. Okay. So like, yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <El> <laughs> yeah. You see that? That's Where is it. that at? Is that what you're referring to? Um, in Kings? Well, well, yeah. Well, this is a, this is an account of it. Um, let's look. Yeah, let's look at. It. Yeah, let's let's get into it. Okay, Con. Well, okay. Well, all right. Well, let me just go to sec. I'll, I'll read this and then I'll go to the to the one I was talking about. Um, yeah. This is Second Kings chapter twenty two, verse fourteen. Because there were multiple schools and multiple colleges, man. Right. You know, Israel had it wasn't just one you know place to learn. Uh, but this is Second Kings twenty two and fourteen. It says. So Hilkiah the priest and Ahakam and Akbor and Shaphan and Asahiah went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of uh, Tikva, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college and they communed with her. So this is one account of a college, you know, that, uh, that the Israelites had, okay, specifically in Jerusalem. And if you get the word, like the uh, elder said, get that word college, a couple of words in this. Uh, okay, here we go. That word college is Strong's H4932, Mashana. Okay. And uh, says next second order. Let me see here. A copy, repetition, a copy. So basically uh, like where the copies were, were held, you know, because you have to duplicate. Um, documents in order for you know for them to to continue on to the next generation and so uh everything was handwritten back then so the college was where things were was where, was where you could find a duplication of things okay um which is spiritual that's dope you know a copy yeah, of a document and, and, and that's what i'm saying the, the the original colleges were to 
keep up with the documents, stay in contact with the history and all these different things. Mm -hmm. You see? Now you have mm -hmm. colleges today, but the colleges of today, they push they push the who's ruling the agenda. Mm -hmm. You see? So like you said, you can always you can always go back into the past to see what's going on in the future. It was an institution that was built up to keep documents and records, you know what I'm saying? And also to push forth uh doctrine. You got it. Gone. Um okay, you know what? Let's go back. Um, let me look for this. Okay, yeah, it's in Second Kings, the second chapter. Um, not the first chapter. Let me go back and share my screen here. That's what I'm saying. Think about this. As much as the Israelites write things down and document things and all these different things, how could it possibly have been billions of years without nothing written down? <laughs> It's no yeah. coincidence. It's no coincidence. It's no coincidence that uh, uh, we, as the Israelites, documented and scribed every doggone thing, man. That's what I'm saying. Because it start, it started, it started with us. You know what yep. I'm saying? The history and all these different things, man, that that apply to Israel. That's what I'm saying. The the history of the world is contained in the Bible. Like literally, right. the whole history of the world is contained in the Bible, along with the present and future. Mm hmm. And it was yep. the same way. It was it was it was the same thing with the prophets of old. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You had they had they had things that they went by according to the scriptures. That's right. That's they right. had and to they... they had to read just like us. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Con. Hey, because uh, I believe you mentioned this in a, in a previous lesson that we did, uh, uh, saying hardly do we guess it right. You know, in mm -hmm. the in the, uh, in the uh, apocrypha. But the scriptures say that which was written the fourth time was for our learning. So we're supposed to learn from our previous past mistakes. But if <laughs> that's why Jake doesn't want to hear this Bible, man, because it cuts them. You know, when you actually look into what we did back then and, and, and you understand that the reason why we're in the current situation that we're in now here in America is because of what uh, the same things that we did back in the in the wilderness. OK, uh, same things that led us to go into the Babylonian captivity, the Medo-Persian captivity. So on and so forth. It's because of our disobedience to the Lord. So that's why it's important to go over, you know, these accounts. Um, mm -hmm. And it's and it's our our history. Esau, I want to give you Black History Month. Well, this is the real so-called so-called Black history, but it's not Black. It's Israelite history. Okay. That's right. So uh, this is the reference that I was uh, alluding to in Second Kings chapter two, and uh, I'll just start at verse one. And it came to pass when Yahweh would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal and Elisha, excuse me, and Elijah said unto to Elisha, Terry, here I pray thee, for Yahweh hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, as Yahweh liveth and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel and the sons of the prophets that were there, <clears throat> you see that the sons of the prophets or the school of the prophets, that's what it was referred to as the sons of the prophets. Those, those were a group of prophets that pretty much, uh, you know, like, like the Lord uh, told Elijah, uh, I have uh, uh, preserved 7,000 men that have not um, uh, bowed the knee to Baal, roughly paraphrasing. Okay, so these were the sons of the prophets. We're, we're, like we say, the prophets have always been on the scene just because it was just, a, you know, uh, a few prophets by name that were mentioned at a particular time doesn't mean that there were not a whole slew of, uh, of other right. uh, prophets that were learning and, you know, that just, they may not have been named necessarily uh, just right. like today we have, you know, brothers that um, have a little bit more notoriety throughout Israel. Well, starting with the apostles, you know, the apostles mm -hmm. of great millstone, right? Apostle Tahar, apostle Gabar, apostle Raka, apostle Ramla. And then you have, uh, you have the elders of the camps, okay, and then there's just regular brothers like me, you know, that that are also teaching his word. So that's what was known as the sons of the prophets, and that was really the point, you know. Done, um, done. And that's what I'm saying. So, so, so if it was a, if it was sons of the prophets back then, they would have to be sons of the prophets now. Mm -hmm. You see, for those that can receive it, those prophets came back and they lots. Kind, yep. you know. Go kind. ahead. Kind of says <laughs> it says, and the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel <clears throat> came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord Yahweh will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. 
hold you your peace, you know? And so Elisha, you know, he had a very close relationship with, uh, with Elijah, but the sons of the prophets were telling Elisha, look, you know, the Lord going to go and go catch Elijah up right and, into the chariot. And so this wasn't just like some secret thing uh, that only Elijah knew. Okay. That Elijah and Elisha knew it was also known amongst the sons of the prophets because they all had that same, they were all close to the Lord like that, you know? Uh, so that was the point on that. Um, let's go back to Amos chapter one, uh, or excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, Amos chapter seven, and then we'll go back to Amos one. Um, it says, then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet. Neither was I a prophet's son, but I was an herdman and gatherer of sycamore fruit. So that's why uh, it says here he was not a prophet, nor was he a prophet's son, because he's strictly uh, notating that, look, I didn't come from the sons of the prophets, but the Lord called me to, to do this work. Right. Uh, and it says in verse five, in verse 15, and Yahweh took me as I followed the flock and Yahweh said unto me, go and prophesy unto my people Israel. Now, therefore, hear the word of the Lord, Yahweh, thou, thou sayest prophesy not against Israel and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. So before we you know, get to that chapter, that's just kind of like a precept to, um, to Amos chapter one. Let um, me go back to it. Okay, uh, just kind of getting like a, uh, what's the word? Just to kind of set the tone. Yeah, overview the water of, of his upbringing. Um, and then um, it says, uh, who was among the herdmen of Tekoa, which Tekoa was uh, a city. Well, we'll get, we can get that word too. It was actually a city in the Southern kingdom. Now, if you look into it, um, Amos, he really, he really uh, was sent to prophesy unto the uh the northern kingdom okay the kingdom of israel but he but he was from uh he was from the southern kingdom okay but tekoa was kind of like a city that was on the edge well i'll get the map but um that word tekoa is uh strong's h8620 thakwai and uh it says a stockade uh let's see here it says a town here we go uh, a town in the hill country of Judah, you see. So it was, it was in the, it was like in like a suburb of Judah near the city of Hebron, uh, which was built by King Rehoboam of Judah, which, and it was also the birthplace of Amos. So again, this was a city uh, located in the in the um, in the country of Judah. Okay, the hill country, um, and and as you brothers should know. The northern kingdom, excuse me, yeah, the, well, the nation of Israel was split into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom at this time. And um, and uh, it says he prophesied during the days of, of uh, King Uzziah, okay, the king of Judah. Um, I should probably pull up a timeline. Uh, you you want to say something, Zaquan? Let me see if I can uh, if I can pull a timeline up real quick. Go on, that's what's up. That's what's up. What was, uh, what, was, uh, what, you, what you said you about to look for? I'm about, I'm about to look for a timeline of um of uh just to kind of show brothers where where we're at in in the timeline of of uh of Israel. Come, on. you know, just to kind of get a visual, man, because there's a lot of names that are that are named that are named that like right. you kind of have to get. For uh, me personally, I'm a visual learner, so I'm gonna just see if I can pull something up real quick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, but yeah, like when you get like like we were saying, when you get into when you get into these uh historical accounts, you have to be able to understand through the spirit that you live in these same things, man. But the places that you're surrounded by, the people that you're surrounded by, you know what I'm saying? The place where we go to camp, all those different things are brought up in the scriptures. You see, it ain't no way to get around it. If you understand, if also if you understand that history repeats itself. If you understand the situations that our forefathers had to deal with, if you understand the situations that you're dealing with, only thing that's changing is the technology. Kind. But the concept don't go away. You see? Kind. Okay. All right. This is the uh, this is the timeline that I actually use uh, for brothers who want to screenshot this, or you know what? I might even just post a link to this uh, in the description on this video because uh, this is a very very helpful timeline that I use, uh, I've been using for a few, a couple years. And, um, so pretty much you can, uh, I'm going to zoom in on Amos, Amos's name right here. Uh, you can't really, 
see, I can only well, zoom in too much further than that. But Amos it says Amos, uh, and you can see this is the year 800 BC, 700 BC. So this is a timeline from uh, from from David's lifespan to Solomon, all the way up into um, the the beginning of the Medo Persian Empire when uh, when we returned from the Babylonian Empire. So this is really good because it names the prophets that prophesied to Israel in the Northern Kingdom, the actual names of the kings of the Northern Kingdom, and also the names of the kings of the Southern Kingdom, the kings of Judah, and the prophets that prophesied during their respective times uh, to the kings of Judah. And now keep in mind, keep in mind you yeah. got you got kings, you got kings in captivity though. Yeah. How you yeah. Okay? you got kings in captivity. You know what I'm saying? Fast forward to today, you got all these different Israelite camps. The the head of the camp is the king. You know what I'm saying? Nate is the king of IUIC. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. You know? Uh, well, uh, 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 General Johanna, you know, they, they, they're the kings of their congregation. But that's what I'm saying. But they in captivity, though. Okay. And you're going to notice that our leaders, you're going you to notice that our leaders in captivity, they they wiggle. Right? Therefore, that's why Amos has to say the things that he's saying. Go ahead, bro. That's right. That's right. Uh, and also, too, so the reason why I pulled this up is so that we can get an accurate understanding of uh, these names. And, you know, it's I'm basically I mean, of course, you have to read the scriptures. You can't just, you know, expect to learn the Bible just by looking at this timeline. Right. But this is a great reference to let you know, OK, Amos was a contemporary with Jeroboam, the king of uh, Seir, uh, the king of uh, uh, um, of Samaria. OK, in the northern kingdom. And then the king of Uzziah of the Southern kingdom. He was a contemporary with that. And then um, it also names the, the, the uh, kings uh, of the other nations that ruled during that time that were in power, I should say during that time. That's what I'm and saying. So, yeah. so now, so now, so now you got, you got the, you got the heads of all these Israelite camps, whether it be the apostles, whether it be Nathaniel, whether it be General Yohanna, whether it be Elder Ricardo GOCC, uh, 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 Elder Zabak of HOI, so on and so forth, right? But then in the provinces that they had in captivity in, you got the mayors and the governors and you got Biden, you got all these losers, right? Right. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Trying to bring out the word in captivity. That's what I'm saying. So you have a contemporary. That's what, bro, Tucker Carlson and all kind of dudes that came down to talk to the apostles. Okay. You see? Yeah. The, that's what I'm saying. This happened. Also keep that in mind. This actually happened. Right? It was a man named Amos that was a regular dude that the Lord put the spirit on him. Mm -hmm. Same thing with you. Let's go. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So it says um, um, the words of Amos, who was among the herdmen of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. Okay, uh, it says in verse two, and he said, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the, and the habitations of the shepherds shall mourn, and the top of Carmel shall wither. So, That's what I'm saying. The Lord, I'm saying the, the Lord's gonna have his men push the word out, man, to warn everybody. Let everybody know. Look, this is what's about to go down. Mm -hmm. He right. always sent his prophets out first. It says the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets. You see, Amos wasn't even of the school of the prophets, but the Lord put the Lord used him anyway. That's it. Amos is another uh representation of the Lord doing what he wanted to. I want to put the spirit on you. For you to speak my word. And that's what you're going to do. Con. Go ahead. Con. It says. Um, <clears throat> it's, and, and by the way. All of these uh, cities that were mentioned. Zion. Well Zion is particularly. Is, uh, is a name of. It's symbolic of Israel. Uh, and in Jerusalem. Was a city in, in Judah. And the habitations of the shepherds. Shall mourn. And the top of Carmel shall wither. These were all uh, locations. 
in Israel, okay? Southern and Northern and Southern Kingdom. And so um, specifically Carmel uh, was, uh, the Mount Carmel was where Elijah confounded the 450 prophets of Baal, for example. So there was history, uh, you know, in these places that were mentioned. Of course, we know about Jerusalem being the capital city of, of, uh, of uh, the nation. But um, pretty much, you know, it's letting you know, like the elder said, <laughs> the judgment is going to be going out. Same thing you're seeing today. Okay. But this is the Lord doing that. The Lord speaking through his prophets. Okay. So it says in verse three, for thus saith Yahweh, for three transgressions of Damascus and for four, I will not turn the punishment. I will not turn away the punishment thereof. And so uh, where it says uh, for three transgressions and for four, it's pretty much talking about, uh, well, we know how iniquity is, is sin stacked on top of sin, right? So I'll get the precept in, um, in uh, Revelation, the 18th chapter, real quick. Um, and when you, when you in captivity, that's what I'm saying. When you in captivity, when you in captivity, you at the mercy of the other nation. You see? And that's what I'm saying. Those transgressions continue to pile up and pile up and pile up. And the Lord is letting you know that, look, now is the point to where it's done. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. This is concerning Babylon the Great, but it's the same concept. Uh, Revelation 18 and 5, it says, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High hath remembered her iniquities. Okay. That's that three transgressions and for four. It's the same thing. That's okay. right. Okay. Iniquity is sin stacked on top of sin. And, you know, it's time for that, for that debt to be paid. That's what's that's what's being insinuated here uh, <clears throat> in Amos one in verse three. Now Damascus uh, is 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 the um, nation of Syria. Okay, you have the Syrians, and then you have the Assyrians. They're two different. They're two different nations. Right. Okay, um, and so Syria was Israel's um, uh, rival to the north, and so. Um, just kind of getting a little bit of history. A lot of this history was is is um, documented in first in first Kings and in second Kings. So um, we're gonna get a little bit of it um, just to kind of set the tone for Damascus and Israel um, Israel um, Israel's relationship with with Damascus or Syria. They're synonymous, uh, right? Which, uh, which is which is necessary which is necessary for the understanding, man. You see, you have to know what it was like during that time. For the, look, for the Lord to call out your transgressions, he done counted them up and he done, that's big. Mm -hmm. You see? The scriptures talk about touching the Lord's, uh, touching the apple of the Lord's eye. Okay. You see? So, for the Lord, that's what I'm saying, because he, he, he goes in, he goes on, he goes in on certain nations. You see? And you have to be able to identify those nations today. All right? You got it. Okay. Con, um, all right. <clears throat> so I'm going to actually get a, uh, uh, a map first, just to kind of put things together. Um, hey man, so, and get it, get it, get into these maps, get into yeah. these maps, man. <laughs> they help. Yeah. They yeah. help, man. You know, yeah. a, a, a lot of, a lot of people be, I'm just going to say it, a lot of people too lazy, man. That's what I'm saying. Salvation, salvation. <laughs> Bro, all you got to do is read and study for salvation. Come on now. That's what I'm saying. You got to know the maps. You got to know different languages, at least a little bit, enough for the understanding. Right. Hell, we're showing you how we do it. The apostles and elders that showed us the blue letter. They go into it on camera. We, we do what they did. I mean, of course, the spirit got to be working, but that's what I'm saying. You get to see, that's what I'm saying. You get to see your favorite superstar at practice doing what he did. That's what I'm saying. You get to see him doing push-ups and sit-ups and squats and all that. Then you get to see him hit 50. What else you want? Con. Con. Look it up, nigga. <laughs> That's right. That nigga. Yeah, yep. since y'all think since y'all think y'all can teach too, you get your ass in the in the, in, in the book. <laughs> Sick of all these yeah. questions and no answers. Con. Yep. Go ahead. The scriptures, the scriptures say, Blessed is he that readeth, man. We're in the information age, man. The, the elders, they back in the old school, the elders, apostles will tell you, you know. Well, I mean, it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that there was no internet. You know what I mean? Right. So, you know, you had to go to the library and look this stuff up, you know, um, to the college, you know. There you <laughs> but, go. Uh, but, but, but this, this uh, map here is from, uh, 
what's website is this? Uh, churchofjesuschrist.org. And then, you know, they have a bunch of different other maps, but this is a, a physical map of the Holy Land. So this is a good one because it, it kind of shows all of the neighboring areas. All right. So uh, we just read in Amos 1 and 3 uh, concerning Damascus, right? So Damascus was a city uh, located on the north of, of Samaria. So you have Samaria right here. I can't highlight it, but you can see it here. Samaria. This is what consisted of the northern kingdom of Israel. Okay. And then to the south was the southern kingdom. Okay. Um, and so Damascus right here was the city, uh, but it, but it was, it was uh, the Syrians dwelt here and pretty much um, I'm going to get the precept, but the, the, uh, the Syrians and the Northern kingdom of Israel were at war with one another <clears throat> constantly from its inception from the, from, from, from its, uh, from basically Jeroboam, right. Which was the first King of Israel up until uh, the Assyrians took them over. And so let's get that precept real quick in uh, First Kings chapter one. And by the way, uh, Aram is Syria, is Damascus. It's all the same thing. It's the, it's the same nation. The nation of Aram are the Syrians. OK, yeah. um, now uh, not the same as the Assyrians, <laughs> different mm -hmm. nations. But uh, anyway, this is First uh, Kings chapter uh, 20, verse one. It says, and Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his hosts together, and there were 30 and two kings with him. Like you said, Elder, there's multiple kings. You know, oh, the king of Syria had, had 32 kings with him, right? It says, and horses and chariots, and he went up and besieged Samaria and warred against it. So again, Samaria is the northern kingdom. It's the, it's Samaria is the landmass that the that the northern kingdom inherited okay upper galilee lower galilee nazareth and samaria that samaria is all pretty much the northern kingdom when you hear samaria if you, if you go on the blue letter and you type in samaria that's talking about the northern kingdom okay the uh the you know the what is that uh the nine tribes you know that consisted of the northern kingdom okay um and so uh, you can read yeah, yeah, yeah. uh if i was uh Abhor when 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 Jake be saying abhor not an Edomite, you know what I'm saying? It's not actually an Edomite right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it goes into uh the Syrians. Abhor not right. a uh yeah abhor not a an Aramite or the or, uh, Aram or yeah, yeah there you go there Syria you go or so so, so when you so when you get in that mind when you get in that mind state then you understand what this is going into. You see, right. you got right. it. Yep, and so and so um you know you can read the you know, the, uh, history on that. We're not going to get into that, but just to prove you, prove to you that, um, that, that the, that the Syrians, not the Assyrians, but the Syrians, um, were at war with, uh, with the, with the Northern kingdom for a good period of time. Um, this is what is being addressed here in Amos, excuse me, Amos, uh, the first chapter. Okay. Uh, and, and, um, it says for three transgressions of Damascus and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they have threshed Gilead with threshing instruments of iron. So uh, pretty much um, uh, Gilead was a, was a we'll, we'll, get, we'll go back to the map. You can see here Gilead here on the right. I'm not sure if you can see my mouse, but uh, Gilead here was also a uh, landmass uh, that belonged to, um, to Israel. I believe uh, the Manassites were... Um, was this was like this this was like their land inheritance okay so they would come they would come down right here's the here's damascus here up up here to the north they would they would come down uh through through bashan and they would and they would you know jack up uh you know gilead and 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 infiltrate samaria at various points so there was constant war between the syrians and the northern kingdom and so because of that right and that history is located in first kings 20 we're not going to get into that you read it on your own time, but because of that, um, it says in verse four, I will send fire into the house of Hazael, which shall devour the, pl the palaces of Ben Hadad. Okay, now uh, Hazael uh, and Ben Hadad were kings of Damascus. Okay, and um, if you go back to uh, it's kind of like a cheat sheet, really, this, um, this, this, uh, this timeline here, you can see 
the names here, the kings of uh, Aram slash Damascus slash Syria, they're all the same. It's the same nation. Ben Hadad the first and the second, and Hazael, oh, and Ben Hadad the third. These were all kings of 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 uh, of Damascus, kings of Syria. Okay, and so the Lord said, because of because of the uh, affliction that you put upon my people, right? Um, the Lord said He's gonna. The Lord said He's gonna um, send a fire into the houses of these kings and devour the palaces of Ben Hadad. OK, it says, I will break also the bar of Damascus and cut off the inhabitant from the plain of Avon and him that holdeth the scepter from the house of Eden and the people of Syria. Again, it's the same same nation. The people of Syria shall go into captivity unto Ker, saith Yahweh. Now, that's what I'm saying. That's, yeah. that's that's just like that's just like us out on the highways and byways saying that the self-proclaimed white man is going into slavery for all the transgressions that he's done. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. That's right. That's why the scriptures say these things uh, that were written were written a full time for our learning. You see, when you're going through what you're going through, as far as uh, your daily life or your spiritual life, you can look back into our forefathers. You can look back into the school of the prophets and see how they handle things. Because they, you, we ain't going through nothing that they didn't go through. You got it. Fine. Yep. And, and, and we're going to get to Esau. But, you know, these other nations ain't off the hook. And this shows you, man. Like, mm -hmm. the Lord is going to jack up all of these nations, man. All of these nations, they've all had us in captivity at one point or another. Okay. And this is just going a little bit more in depth. Because we talk about Esau to a blue in the face. But these other nations ain't getting a pass either, man. They're all going into captivity in the kingdom. Yep. That's okay? right. And two thirds and so, of the nation of Israel, two thirds of the nation of Israel, are gonna be judged. That's right. That's a nation in itself. That's right. Go ahead. Come. Okay. So, um, uh, oh, so this was actually fulfilled uh, when it comes to you know this specific prophecy where the Most High said he's gonna break the bar of Damascus and cut off the inhabitant. Okay, this was uh, fulfilled. Uh, I'm gonna get that scripture. You know, now of course there's other things that have been done since then that uh, will lead to them getting jacked up again okay but when it comes to uh you know certain prophecies cer certain prophecies were fulfilled at least to a to a certain degree mm -hmm. um this is a uh, second kings chapter 16 and um you know you can read the whole the whole account you know the point is in uh, verse nine so i'm gonna just get straight to the point okay it says second kings 16 and 9, and the king of Assyria hearkened unto him, for the king of Assyria went up against Damascus. Again, Damascus is Syria, and Assyria, or Ashur in the Hebrew, there are two different nations, okay? Aram and Ashur, those are two different nations. Right. Assyria is Ashur, okay, and Aram is Damascus or Syria. Now it says, the king of, Syri of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it and carried the people of it captive to Kerr and slew resin. So there's so there's right. the um the uh the account right there that you know <laughs> the Assyrians uh the Lord used the Assyrians to jack up the um the uh the Syrians okay or Damascus. Damascus now, falls. That's it. Yeah well yeah that, and there's more into that you can go into the history the history's there. The history is there. You know we can read all the you know chapters but we'll never get past the first chapter of Amos <laughs> if we do that. So I'm right. trying to get, you know, get to it. So that's the point there on uh, on Damascus, right? So now we go into another um, another nation. Okay, Amos 1 and 6. Thus said the Yahweh, for three transgressions of Gaza, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they carried away the captive, uh, carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. It's now, now Gaza is the Philistines, Okay. Now, let's go back to this map. It's going to help us a lot. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let me see here. This map here. Now, now Gaza. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, Gaza was a city here. You can see here. I'm going to zoom out so you can kind of see to scale where it was at. Okay. Now, Gaza was a city uh, on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Okay. Now, uh, again, Gaza, whenever you read Gaza and prophecy, it's referring to the Philistines. Okay, this is the plain 
of Philistia. And so you have Ashkelon, Ashdod, Ekron, uh, Lachish. All of these five cities here um, were were cities. Well, you know, Lachish. You know, sometimes it was occupied uh, by Israel a little bit more, but um, especially Ekron, Ashdod, Ashkelon, and Gaza. Anytime you read about these cities, for the most part, it's going to be referring to uh, the Philistines, okay? Um, which were, if I'm not mistaken, those were Cushites, okay? Which were Hamites from the from the you know from the nation of Ham, and so. Um, the history on that is expounded upon here. It says, I will not turn upon, excuse me, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. Okay. And so the history on that was that uh, pretty much when you go into the, uh, the commentaries, you know, they, they helped, uh, uh, they helped, uh, uh, you know, Edom by kind of like always being at war with with the Israelites, always being at war with the with the southern kingdom specifically. You know, King David he had subdued the Philistines uh, during the time of Solomon. There was that forty years of peace, but you know, after King after uh, 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 King Solomon died, you know, there was a time period where they started going back to war again. You know, and um, and the Philistines did they they were selling they were selling. Uh, uh, you know, the Israelites away and they didn't even need to. It's not like they needed to, to sell them away. They just, you know, you know, they, they just did it for, for money, pretty much for extra money. So it was kind of like they, just, had, they had to fulfill prophecy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it was kind of like unwarranted. Like, obviously, when you win a, when you win a, um, a battle, you're going to take prisoners of war, you know, but just like the scriptures say in Zechariah, the first chapter, man, you know, the Lord is sort of pleased with the heathen, okay, right. because he was a little displeased with Israel. So he, he used the heathen to judge us, but the heathen helped for the affliction. They did, they over, they went overboard, you know, to the point where it's like, okay, now, now the Lord's going to jack these other nations up for, for doing too much, you know? And so uh, in verse seven, and if you have any precepts or any points of quality, you know, Balkashah stop me, but I'm just going to just kind of go with the flow here. No, you got it. You got it. Uh, kind of says, but I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, uh, which shall devour the palaces thereof. So, uh, you know, keep in mind, it wasn't just, you know, one city. OK, these these little red dots are 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 um, are big. They're like they were like big cities, but there were many smaller other like, little, you know, cities with, that were walled. You can see down here at the bottom. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but you can see kind of to scale uh, how much the distance between some of these cities were. Some of them were, you know, 10, 15 miles apart. So in between them, you might have had smaller, you know, little cities around it. And so all of these little cities in this area of the Philistines uh, were condemned. OK, the Lord said that he was going to devour the palaces thereof. OK, and cut off in verse eight. And I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod. There's another city that we uh, saw on the map and him that holdeth the scepter from Ashkelon, another city. And I will turn mine hand against Ekron. So all of these cities are named Ashkelon, Ashdod, Ekron. You see that all in the same area. And now, keep in mind, now, now, keep in mind, this is what Je this is what Amos is telling the people. He's this is the message that he spread. Right. He's letting these other nations know that they're about to get judged. Yep. All the surrounding Israelite neighbors, all these different nations are finna get judged. He's yep. a, that's what, that's what, he was a herdsman, not even from the school of the prophets, but now he's out on the highways and the byways telling all these nations, Israel included, that they finna get judged. Okay. Let that sink in. Let that sink in and then tell me how that's any different from you. Mm -hmm. that's right you got it yep the scriptures say man hey uh, the prophets of old prophesied against many nations you know a famine and, and pestilence this is what's going on man you know <clears throat> Amos was, was one of those uh, uh, prophets of old you know uh, it says in verse 9 here's another nation being addressed 
That's what I'm saying. That, he 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 bringing all the burdens. He bringing he bringing a burden against everybody that need one. Mm -hmm. Then you said what what his name mean? Uh, burden burdensome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Was he not that? That's it. That's what I'm saying. And, and, and whether you, for those who can receive it, he, he he might be walking the earth today, doing the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. You got it. Yep. I don't know why it's like taking eons to load. Um, let me go up. There's so many precepts just on this one verse. It's funny. Right. Um, I literally got to scroll all. The, I don't even know why it brought up so many precepts. That's crazy. Let me just x out of that. This is Amos chapter one, in verse nine. It says, thus saith Yahweh, for three transgressions of Tyrus and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom and remembered not the brotherly covenant. OK, so uh, now we have another nation being addressed, Tyrus. Okay. Uh oh, wait, 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 wait. With that, that brotherly covenant that Edom, bro that Edom broke go back to Jacob and Esau. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Esau got uh, uh, with the whole situation where Jacob. Uh, 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 over the birthright, you know, mm -hmm. Esau vowed. Esau vowed that he was gonna kill Jacob after Isaac died, and that spirit never died. So it it made its way all the way up to this point. You see, that's right. When that whole race it, race it, you know what I'm saying, daughter of Babylon, all these prophecies. You see, that brotherly covenant was broken when Esau gave us up to these heathen. Mm -hmm. You got it. Yep. And also, since uh, since Tyrus is being addressed, or the uh, uh, the 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 tie, you know, well, matter of fact, let's go let's go to the um, to the map again. It's going to help help us a little bit. So you have uh, Phoenicia, which is uh, consists of Tyre and uh, and, si and Sidon. Okay, these were um, these were cities, you know, that were really important for uh, for receiving. Uh, what's the word? They were port cities, basically. They were, so they're really important for receiving uh, ships, and they had a lot of commerce coming through them. And so during the time of uh, of Solomon, uh, the the king of Tyre uh, also kind of had dealings with with Solomon, you know. And there was a covenant that was made uh, with um with uh with 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 Solomon in that time during uh, during the time of King Solomon when the when the uh, the house of the Lord was being built as well. You know, and so, you know, that that in itself, you know, was 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 broken when they delivered um, uh, the Israelites, you know, to to the to the captivity of Edom. You know, Esau always has his hands in, in you know, getting uh, uh, the Israelites jacked up, you know, as well. But these other nations, man, they, they, they didn't go they didn't go unpunished. They didn't go overlooked the, the certain things they would they would do little deals they would do to sell us sell us off to another nation. Uh, uh, that was, that was remembered, you know? And so, um, you know, yeah, of course Esau is our, is our, you know, physical brother, but there were other, uh, uh packs that we had made with other nations in righteousness that were broken. You know, ultimately we've been betrayed by all these nations at one point or another. Okay. And so the judgment of that, uh, uh, it says, but I will send a fire upon the wall of Tyrus, which shall devour the palaces thereof. And, you know, back then cities were walled. So if you had a walled city uh, that um, you burn the walls down, it, the city is defenseless. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's another thing. All these nations being addressed. Um, now, here's here's the uh, the kicker with the last two here. Uh, last two nations here that are being addressed is uh, Esau and Ammon. So we got Amos chapter one, uh, verse 11. It says, thus saith Yahweh. For three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity and did and his anger did tear perpetually and he kept his wrath forever. Now, that's like the scriptures that we bring out all the time. Obadiah, the uh, uh, first chapter, you know, where it talks about uh you know, he uh, uh, always trying to put his, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, his own mother's son. Matter of fact, let me see if I can find that real quick. And keep, check this out. It says, mm -hmm. uh, it says, and did, uh, uh, oh, you just cut it off. Oh, uh, so in, verse like it. 11, in verse 11, it said, uh, yeah, put verse 11 back up, Baba Kasha. Yeah, I got you. 
Oh, bad. I was looking for this. Uh, put this back up here. Share screen. Boom, boom. Oh. All right. All right. Verse 11. It says, and did cast off all pity. Right? Matter of fact, yeah, it says, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because he did pursue his brother with the sword. And did cast off all pity and his anger tear perpetually. Mm -hmm. When you get into that word perpetually, that means ongoing. Mm -hmm. Ongoing. That's what I'm saying. So from, 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 from Jacob to Esau, that never went away. You see? Mm -hmm. Now, when they done grew up in the nations, it still haven't gone away. Now, you fast forward up today. Still the same thing. Cut. Still the same thing. Get that word perpetually right quick. Kind. That's what I'm saying. The only thing that's going to stop that perpetual hatred is the Lord coming back. You see, until the Lord, until Yahweh sends Yahweh Shai to deliver us, that 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 dynamic is going to be consistent. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Con, that word uh, perpetually is Strong's H5703. Uh, um, it actually says in the text, La'id, with a la in the beginning, but Id is the root word. Uh, meaning ever or evermore. So lie at the beginning of the word means to to evermore or forever, pretty much forever, perpetually. Um, forever, continuing future, forever. Yeah, Perpetu perpetuity. That's what I'm saying. It's, 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 it's perpetually, forever, continuing future. Mm -hmm. That applies, Yeah. right? A continuous existence. That's what I'm saying. That's what lets you know. That's another. That's that's proof that Esau and Jacob are still in the planet. Cause you got the moon. You got the moon and the sun coming up every day. You got that perpetual hatred between Jacob and Esau still playing out over the planet. Okay. You see, it says forever of the Most High's existence. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Come on, man. Yep. This is the this is the Lord's will playing out. Okay. Go. You got it. Coming. All right. Um, going back here. Oh, so I had that scripture that I was uh, quoting here concerning Esau. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to just get this in. Uh, just pull this up here. Psalms. It was Psalms. And we'll also get Obadiah, but Psalms chapter 50. This is Psalms chapter 50. Heck. Psalms 50 and 20. It says, actually, I'll start up. Um, verse 18 it says Psalms 50 and 18 when thou sawest the thief then thou cons consentest with him and has been partaker with adulterers okay talking about Esau really because uh, if you read up it says what has but unto the wicked the most I said what has thou to do to declare my statutes now who's the wicked who's the seed of the serpent Esau man okay so he has a particular categorization uh, separate from the other nations, uh, denoting that he's more wicked than all of them. Okay. And uh, it says, when thou saw us a thief, these other nations, they, they stole us and sold us off to Esau. It says, East, it says, then thou consentest. When you consent to something, that means you agree. You make a, you make a, a you know, a deal. You strike a deal. Okay. You know, it says, then thou consentest with him and has been a partaker with adulterers. Okay. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. And thy tongue frame of deceit. That's why we call Esau the devil, man. Because this is that's what this devil means, deceiver. Okay. And all he does is lie and speak evil on the earth. It says, Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Okay, now who was Esau's brother? Jacob. Okay. Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. And so it says, Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou slanderest thine own mother's son. So that's your own brother. OK, but you talking all manners of uh, evil against them, saying when the, when the days when the days of mourning of my father are over, then I'm going to kill my brother. My, you know, that's the spirit that Esau is in. OK, and so this is a precept to uh, Amos uh, one and eleven, man. All right. Um, let me see how long we've been going here. Good little minute. All right. We can. Uh, an hour. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go, we're going to go on uh, to the next, to the next verse. Um, you know, you brothers know the precepts on Esau. Okay. It says, but I will verse 12, but I will send a fire upon Teman 
which Teman uh, is a chief city in East and Edom, uh, which shall devour the places of Basra, another right. city, another city in, e in Edom. Okay, chief city, uh, chief city in Edom, I believe. Yeah, matter of fact, because uh, yep. what's uh, Isaiah sixty three? Mm -hmm. uh, it talks about the Lord coming back, going through Basra. Come on. you got it. That's right. That's right. Okay, and then the last nation that's addressed here in this chapter is Ammon. Okay, so this is Amos, <clears throat> Amos chapter one, verse thirteen. For thus saith thus saith Yahweh, for three transgressions of the children of Ammon, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have ripped up the women uh, with child of Gilead, that they might enlarge their border. All right, now uh, let's let's get into that into this um, map one more time. Right. Oh, and we skipped Edom. But Edom's down here in, uh, to the south. Okay, you got Idumia and Edom. It's the same thing, really. Um, uh, to the south of the of the southern southern kingdom. Okay, and you have Ammon, the Ammonites. Oh well, we didn't even identify the Edomites. Edomites is the self proclaimed white people today. The Caucasians. Okay, <laughs> the ca the Caucasians of Ca. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Salaki. Yeah. Shout, exactly. shout out, Big Bro Malcolm. <laughs> All right. That's it. That's it. You know. The, the 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 individuals from the mount the mountains of Seir, okay. This is Mount Seir. This area here uh, is Edom, the nation of Edom. Okay, scriptures say Esau is Edom. So um, we also have Ammon, with the modern day uh, uh, Japanese, you know, uh, individuals today. Okay, Ammon and Moab both came from Lot. All right. So and then going into these nations, there's 18 nations. You got to go into the nations and be able to. To know uh, when certain nations are named, which people group is talking about, okay? Because right. we all dwelt in a lot closer proximity back then. Because guess what, man? This nation, excuse me, this landmass was a very, very fruitful uh, uh, landmass to dwell in back then. So all the nations dwelt along this area. Most of them, not all of them. A lot of nations dwelt in this area, you know, because also the population wasn't nearly as much as it is today. Uh, so it was a lot more, you know, a lot, we were a lot closer, you know, we we're all in the, in the middle East. Okay. A lot of the nations were. And so, um, and so Ammon is here is located to the, to the East of, uh, the Dead Sea. Okay. And so you can kind of see here, uh, it's, it's, uh, proximity to Gilead. You can imagine the wars that happened in these plains here, the city here, uh, Rabah, also named, uh, also named Ammon here, uh, took place a lot of wars took place in the plains of gilead so um you know because basically it was always a land grab they were trying to expand their lands right, right. so going back to amos one uh thus saith the lord uh for three transgressions of the children of ammon and for four i will not turn away the punishment thereof because they have ripped up the women with child of gilead that they might enlarge their border OK, and, and and when it says ripped up the women with child, meaning they cut open their bellies, killed the killed the babies, you know, you know, they they they, they matter just, you know, took pillars the city, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, of heinous, you know, acts were done by these Ammonites as well, man, when they were, you know, fighting. And you can find out all of these um, skirmishes in first and second kings, the different uh, wars that happen, you know, small wars. Uh, that happened between these various different nations. Israel was always at war with these other nations, man, at one point in time or another. Okay, right. I, uh, I don't, I don't remember who posted it in the chat the other day, but it was basically uh, each nation and how long they had Israel in captivity uh, at the time they did, and all the nations were on there. All seventeen nations. There's eighteen nations including Israel, but seventeen nations that aren't Israel, all had Israel in captivity at some point in time as documented history, written down by the Israelites. <laughs> kind. You got it. Kind. Yeah, I'm just getting these demonic ass scoffer um, comments off the comment board. Okay, there we go. All right, cool. Um, yeah, the brother uh, uh Soldier of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai said, Basra means sheepfold as well, where the sheep where the sheep are being held. Okay. Hmm. So the water for that, brother. Right on. Um, 
you know? And so um, let's go to, hold on, um, back to Amos. Keep doing this one. Amos chapter uh, one and uh, in verse 13 at the end, it says, because they have ripped up the women with child of Gilead that they might enlarge their border. And again, we already, we already went to the map seeing how uh, close proximity Ammon was uh, to Gilead. So they were trying to expand into, uh, to the north uh, into Gilead to take the, take the, uh, the, the inheritances of Israel. Uh, so it says in verse 14, but I will kindle a fire in the wall of Rabbah. Okay. Which I believe that was, uh, that was here. You see here, the city of Rabbah I can't zoom in anymore, but uh, you can see the red dot here. Um, uh, you're not sharing your screen. If you're talking, if you want to. Oh, look my at bad. It. Yeah. I thought I was, I apologize. Yeah. My bad. I'm not, you good. You good. Yeah, there we go. We can see you now. Okay, so like you, yeah. So, um, so Ammon, you can see here to the east, uh, is proximity to Gilead to the north, and then Rabbah is a city, uh, that was pretty much, uh, uh, owned or like a chief city in, in um, the nation of Ammon. And you can see how close it was to Jericho and Gilgal, and uh, and uh, but but the Lord said He was going to judge, uh, the city of Rabbah, which is symbolic of the the nation of Ammon. For it trying to expand its borders um, by killing the Israelites. And um, you can continue on reading here, continue on reading in verse 14, but I will kindle a fire in the wall of Rabbah and it shall devour the palaces thereof with shouting in the day of battle with a tempest in the day of the whirlwind. And their king shall go into captivity. He and his princes together, saith Yahweh. I would say, and the Lord, I would say, the Lord tells you, He sends somebody to tell you you're gonna get judged. He tells you why, and then He tells you that, yeah, I, yeah, I said that, and they mm -hmm. shall know that I am the Lord, right? Thus saith the Lord. You see, so in this first chapter of Amos, He's getting into all our enemies, and Israel is like, yeah, yeah, get him, Amos, talk your shit, Amos, mm -hmm. get out there mm -hmm. one time, Ak. and rightfully so. And rightfully so, because the, 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 the atrocities that these other nations have committed against us have to be dealt with, have to be dealt with. You see, yep. the yep. Lord has hardened the he has hardened the heart of these nations to go hard on us. You see, to the point to where our only option is to call on him. It's a strategy. There's a message. There's a method to the so-called madness. OK. Mm -hmm. You got it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this uh with this quick with this quick precept, and then I'm gonna speak a little bit about um about the Assyrian Empire. And wrap it up. Uh, let me get this in Jeremiah chapter 49. <clears throat> this is Jeremiah chapter 49. This is also a chapter. Uh, well, this beginning of this uh, chapter talks about a prophecy against Ammon. Uh, I'm start at verse one. It says uh, concerning the Ammonites, thus saith Yahweh. Hath Israel no sons? Hath he no heir? Why then doeth their king inherit Gad and, and his people dwell in his cities? So again, uh, the Ammonites, you know, at one point or another dwelt in the lands of Gad, okay, because they had taken over their cities. And the, it's a rhetorical question. Does Israel not have an, an inheritance? You know, does he not have a land that, that the Most High set up uh, for, for, for them to, to live in? And the answer is yes, the, the, you know, the Most High did give uh, the tribe of Gad um, a land inheritance, but the Ammonites had taken it over. OK, it says, therefore, <laughs> and man, and these, and these uh, Amalekites that think that they're not going to that think they're not going to get judged for all of the madness that they're doing over there in the Lord's uh, in the Lord's land, man. They got another thing coming. OK, right. but we on Ammon right now. It says, therefore, behold. The days come, saith Yahweh, that I will cause an alarm of war to be heard in Rabbah, which we already established Rabbah is a city in Ammon, Rabbah of the Ammonites, and it shall be a desolate heap, and her daughter shall be burned with fire. Then shall Israel be heir unto them that were his heirs, saith mm -hmm. Yahweh. So that lets you know, man, the Lord is not, you know, we get on Israel a lot and we get on Esau a lot, but there's many, like, like uh, I don't want to call them like buffer chapters, but a lot of chapters that we may not visit as much or a lot of precepts that we may not quote off the top of our head as much. It doesn't mean it's not in there, man. 
You know, these other nations are definitely, they definitely got another thing coming. And um, concerning the Assyrian Empire, I ended off on just kind of, kind of tailing, uh, circling it all back to the, the relevance of the Assyrian Empire. So you can see here, uh, Amos, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Amos here uh, said he prophesied around 760 BC. If you, if you go down to the bottom of, the, of this uh, timeline, you can see uh, pretty much the end of the reign of the kings of Damascus, the kings of Syria, and the beginning of the reign of the kings of Assyria. Because pretty much during the time of, of uh, Amos and the king Uzziah, um, the Assyrians started taking over the neighboring nations, okay? And so the Lord used the Assyrians to judge these nations that were written about in uh, Amos chapter 1. Notice how Assyria was not mentioned as one of these nations that was going to get judged because the Lord actually used Assyria to take down a lot of these nations before he used Assyria to actually take down Samaria itself, the northern kingdom itself. That happened about, uh, say, about eight, about 40 about, eight, about about 50, 50 to um, 60 years after, okay? Uh, you see Hosea came right after Amos because Hosea goes into a lot more about warning Israel before they just got to, pretty much just done away with, all right? But that shows you the importance of, of the Assyrian Empire, uh, just kind of uh, foreshadowing that. We're going to be talking about that in the next, you know, couple of lessons uh, in this series. So that's pretty much all I have for this one, Zaquan. Hey, son. Hey, well, with that, we want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakaha Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the Akim teaching about the Mayam Wa'amath. That's in sincerity and truth. Shalom. Shalom.